Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chump Chat. It's your boy, Johan Gomez, alongside my co-host, Chris Kuchar. And today we have a very special guest, a uh, good friend, I'd say, of our last guest. And the Paxton Erickson episode is now live, so make sure y'all go tune into that. But this week we have a very special guest, up-and-comer, U20, Philly Union superstar, Jack McGlynn. Welcome to the pod, my boy. What's up, guys? Happy to be here, man. Yes, sir. All right, so first of all, you know, we got to break the ice, okay? Because we were, sp- we were speaking to Paxton. I'm hella close to my brother. And I know that, you know, you guys just went to camp, got from got back from camp. And the talk of the town is how Jogo ran you and Madden twice. That's what he was saying to me. I don't know if that's true or not or what you have to say about that, but I'll let you have the floor. Well, I know your brother's close to you, but he's also a liar because that never happened. I smacked <laughs> him in every game we played. He's, he's cabin in that. Wow, he's a lot. I'm gonna text him after this. You gotta text him because look, I'll I'll read you right now. So he says, <laughs> "Ask him about how I ran him in Madden twice. He's gonna say he ran me in 2K, but oh well." <laughs> I word ran for him word. in both. It was crazy. <laughs> and pa- Paxton uh, said the same thing. He said he Paxton said that Joe goes a liar. You say he's a liar, so I guess he's a liar, man. Wow, wow. Hey. I don't know, man. I'm going to back my brother, but I guess the Philly boys got y'all's thing going on. But he also, and this is also from Paxton and Jogo. Jogo sent me this picture, and you look a lot different now. But Paxton also told us to ask you about your hair. So that's a little quick. Nah, that's crazy. You're exposing (laughs) me like that right now. That's crazy. Those are are rough times. Bro, so so let's get into this, though, because... Joe, I have no idea when this picture is from because Joe looks exactly the same, but you look mad different. So I don't know what year that was. Like when? When was that? I think that was at IMG. I think because that was the first time I met Joe. So I think it was like 2018 or something. I looked like I was 12 at camp. It was, yeah, your brother was like looked so old compared to me. Like we were there with like Cade Cow who had like an eight pack at the time, and I was there looking <laughs> like a 12 year old. But so we were talking a little bit with Paxton about that. Paxton was also an undersized guy. How would you say that that helped your game develop now to to the point where you've grown and now you have that size and you have that strength, but you developed maybe a more technical side of your game because you were smaller? Like, how would you say that helped you out? Yeah, it definitely helped. I, I would always play up uh, through academy, so I, I would be the smallest guy by far. So it just it made you be technically better. You have to think quicker. You have to make decisions quicker. Or else you just get caught and pushed off the ball, basically. So it, it really helps now because I got the physicality part now and the technical part, too. You, you just mentioned academy, so I'm going to keep the flow of conversation going. Um, Obviously, you're a New York City guy. You, you ended up playing for Philly's academy. Um. Mm-hmm. T- tell us how that happened. What what brought you over there, and how come you um, weren't in, with NYCFC? Yeah, well, I grew up playing for a team called Gachi for, like, my whole career. And then when I was, I think in 2019, I made the move to Philly. It was just about, like, the opportunities they were giving to young guys. Obviously, Brendan Aronson and Mark McKenzie you saw how they progressed. And it's just they had the residency program there. Like, Red Bulls was an hour and a half for me. New York City FC that didn't have USL at the time, and then Philly had both, so it was an easy it was an easy option for me. Was it was it a tough decision though? Like did you did you leave your family, or were you able to move there with them? Yeah, it was a tough decision. I left my family to go to the residency, um, so it was tough at the time. And I was just coming back from an injury. I had dislocated my knee like three months before I went to Philly, so it was it was a really tough time for me first when I got here, but. It, it uh, everyone here was just so helpful and open, so it, it became it became really nice here. I know, I mean, I know my fair share about the academy. I know Gachi. Uh, I know they have a pretty good academy. Uh, I'm not sure how they are now, but you know, how was that difference going from probably I'm guessing you were the star player there um, to I mean now you've made your way to being you know a well known name in Philly, but you know how would you say the difference in level was when you jumped from Gachi to then Philly? Would you say it was a big jump, or would you say you were you know, it was, wasn't too bad. I mean, I would say the main thing that was different was just the technical level of players because Gachi were all like physical. I would be playing up like two or three years there. So I was used to the physicality level, but the technicality, like when I moved to Philly, that's what really stood out to me. Football is back and BET online remains your number one source for all of your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, BET Online 
features live betting, free contests, live scores, and all sorts of giveaways all season long. It's always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports teams and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. You know the chums are the best at golf. But anyway, head to btonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. BT Online, where the game starts. Obviously, you're still, you know, breaking through at Philly. Um, you're doing really well. Congrats on on, t- on this season, by the way. Um, Thank you. But, you know, how how focused are you? Obviously, you know, you're going to say that you're hella focused on Philly and whatnot. But in the back of your mind, I'm sure there's a European move that you want to accomplish. Or how does that look? Yeah, obviously, that's a, that's a big goal for me. I know I'm not ready for it yet. I, I still haven't even established myself to start it here. But, I mean, that's a big goal for me, like, personally, just to play in Europe and show that I can do it there. That's That's what I dreamed of my whole life. So I want to do that eventually at some point. Do you have a dream club that you grew up supporting over there that you're hoping for a move in the future potentially? <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Liverpool fan, so that would be a dream come true, but we'll see what happens. That's that's a big goal to reach. You guys are having a tough time right now. Maybe, maybe by the time you get over there, you'll be able to help, help you all out. Hopefully, they, they suck right now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> their, their midfield is old, so, I mean, maybe it's the perfect time for some new blood, someone like you, but <laughs> let me ask you. Are you so? I think Paxton, you know, he plays with the national team a little bit more as a false nine or sometimes ten, but you're more of an eight. Yeah, I'm more of an eight. Yourself? I would say, like, I would say just a like a yeah eight. I would say just box to box and just getting on the ball. That's what I like to do. Okay, and I'm I'm a I'm asking a tough question right here. We'll see how honest you are with yourself. What do you think you're lacking in your game to be able to make that jump to even a starter in MLS and then hopefully a move to Europe? I would say a little bit in the defensive part of the game because at Philly we're like a really high press team, so I'm still kind of getting like adjusted to that and working on that every day in training. So that's something I need to keep improving on. And uh, we spoke a little bit with this about Paxton. Um, you have a new coach in the national team. Now, Joe told me to ask you this because, you know, you've been a part of the national team for a long time, since U13s or something like that, right? Yeah, since U14, yeah. How have you seen it change now to the U20s? Have you seen, like, growth within U.S. soccer? I mean, you can be honest. Yeah, I think I definitely have because, like I said, I was really undersized at the time. So, like, the first couple of national camps, I was always in the smaller group of guys, and there was just about a bunch of, like, big physical tall guys that would just dominate everyone in the club so they would get calls. But now I think with U20, with Mikey, I think he's a great coach. So we just have a great group of players. Like, everyone's so technical. Everyone – everyone's able to play under pressure. And that's, that's what I really think has changed over time. Is there something that stands out to you about Mikey specifically? I know I've had him as a coach, as has Joe. That's one of Joe's favorite coaches. But is there anything that stands out to you? I think it's the confidence he has in us. Like, he tells us every day, every, every day before the game, he's like, I have blind confidence, you guys. No matter who we're playing, we can go out and beat them. And I think that just – that really gets you going as a player and really helps you out on the field. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I think personally Mikey's a great coach. And I think – um he will be involved with the senior team at the World Cup, but I just wanted to see what you thought about that. Let's let's change the subject a little bit to to your agency, Rock Nation. I don't know how much you can talk about them, but we've had Chris Richards on a couple of times now. That's our boy. Um, mm-hmm. He's talked a little bit about them. What are, what are the benefits that you think uh, you have with being with them? I mean, I'm kind of new there, so I really haven't got a chance to like fully get like the experience there, like go to the office or anything, but. Um... I think it's just like the name and the brand. I mean, everyone knows Rock Nation. You know how popular it is. And I think that just helps with like a lot of connections, I would say. There's so many different connections you can get from there. I mean, off the field, on the field, they just they help you out no matter what. It's just such a big name, you know. You seen Jay-Z around yet? <laughs> Not wish. I haven't. I'm, I mean, I'm going to go to the office in New York uh, in the off season because I'm going to go home. But, I mean, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully he's there. <laughs> So, so, so you're from New York, living in Philly now. Um, obviously, two huge city, huge, huge American cities. How would you compare and contrast the two? Is there one that you like better? Are you always going to be more of a New York City guy because that's where you're from, or have you really made your home there in Philly? I don't know if the Philly fans are going to like this, but I mean, I like New York a lot. I mean, I grew up there my whole life. It's just it's home, you know. But um, it's a lot. It's a lot like slower here, I would say, because I mean, I'm not living in the city in Philadelphia, so I live like. 
outside of it. So it's it's a lot slower and quieter, which it took some getting used to at first. But I, I like it now. I got my own place here, so it's, it's chill now. How how old were you when you left New York City? I uh, was 16, 15. Oh, gotcha. So you spent a good amount of time there to really understand things before you left. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I got – it took a lot to get used to. Like, the residency house I moved to was – it was in the middle of nowhere. Like it was just yeah. the quiet community. So I, it was so boring at first, but it, it, it got <laughs> nice though. There you go. I'm, I'm going to take it back a little bit. So Johan brought up um, some things that you were maybe lacking in your game. I'm going to talk about something that you're very good at, which is free kicks. We talked about this a little bit with Paxton. We were asking him who maybe on the team is um, on, on the U.S. Women's national team is, is the best free kick taker. He said, Brandon Craig. Um, I, I, I want to hear who you think is the best. I mean, I'm a humble guy, but I'm going with myself. I'm, I'm just I mean, Paxton said you too. Paxton said it was you as well. All right, but good, he, good. he did Brandon say Green. he did say depending on the day though. He said depends on the day. He said yeah, sometimes I'll you're give, trash. I'll give it him. I'll all right. That's crazy. Uh, I'll give it. A, I'll give it to Brandon. Uh, he's good at him, but I mean the one he scored, he slipped. So I mean, didn't that's what I said. Him. That's what I said. I said. I said maybe he got a little bit lucky on the one because he slipped. Yeah, he took like ten this year with the second team and didn't score one. So I mean, he's out of he's out of the consideration, honestly. Yeah, so Anthony, I, you got to flash I, up. You got to flash yeah. up the one that he scored against. Who was that against, Chris? Dynamo. It was against Dynamo. You want to run us through that a, a little bit? That free kick that you scored against Dynamo. Yeah, I mean, I I practice them every day after training. It's like me and Jack Kelly are always out there hitting them to see who hits it better. And I mean, I just have a lot of confidence whenever I step up and. My teammates trusted me, and it was a special moment to just get my first goal. You know, definitely. So that was your first goal with the with the with the senior team before. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's well, what a way to do that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I want to take it back a little bit though, because you mentioned residency. I don't know if Joe has told you, but Joe had quite an adventure living at FC Dallas uh, residency. As did I. I floated in and out of it, but I know. I think I had Axel Picasso. Uh, you know Axel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, live I think I had him on Snap, or I'm, I'm all. I know also no Nate, but I don't know if Nate ever lived in residency. But I think I'm not sure. Yeah, but I think isn't the residency house like hella nice? It's like two stories, right? It is. It is a huge crib. It's like, it's like they just got a new one too. They moved out of the one we were all in. Me, Nate, and Axel, we all lived together, and uh, it's huge. Like I first moved out, I was like, oh my god! Like I was like on a visit here to come see if I wanted to come here, but. I was driving through the neighborhood. I was like, damn, this is like crazy because I'm used to like Queens, New York, where all the houses are like this long. So, I mean, <laughs> I was just showing up. There's like 10 people in the crib. And I'm like, wow. Speaking of, aren't, aren't y'all building some sort of a new complex right now? You, it has, it hasn't don't started know? yet. Yeah, okay. but like I saw the pictures of it and everything. It looks sick. Yeah. <laughs> I think no. Yeah, Anthony, if you want to throw that up, it, it looks insane. It, it's always good to know, especially as a player, I'm sure, as a fan as well, but especially as a player that they're investing in the program and just putting the money in to take care of you guys. So, yeah, uh, that's massive. It's, it, it's really good for kids just like how you came up in the future. Um, They'll get even more Jack McGlynn, so that's awesome. Yeah, I wish I was in the academy when they were building that. that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're using that Brendan Aronson, that Mark McKenzie money, and hopefully that, now the yeah, Texan yeah. and the Jack McGlynn money. Hopefully they're making them – they're hoping that check comes through. But I still want to hit on residency, though, because I genuinely don't know how it works for y'all, because what you're, what it sounded like is y'all had a very more pleasant experience than we did. So how how were y'all's meals in the residency? Oh, they were great. We had this house mom. Her name's Cecilia. She was the best. She would cook everything for us. I mean, do our laundry. She was so nice. She was like our mom, basically, because we were all living away from home. So it was not even like you left your family because of her. So she was great. So it was three of y'all in a big house. No, no, no. There was like eleven of us. <laughs> okay, okay. Did y'all get y'all own room, or y'all are sh- y'all are sharing a room? No, nah, we had a roommate. Me and Axel were roommates. Okay, okay. They got still the though because Nate Nate told as hell. <laughs> but now, okay, so now you got your own place. Yeah, yeah. I got my own apartment. Own I live like two doors down from Nate now. Okay. Can't escape this man, kid. <laughs> and and so who cook? You cook. Y'all cook for each other from time to time, or it's it's just no. Nah, we thing? we always cook for ourselves. I be, I chef it up. Trust me. I, I you're nice. Nice. You're nah, nice. Low key. Some things. Do you have like Some a nutritionist type thing, or you just like are like wait whatever you're feeling, you'll you'll throw on. Nah, whatever I'm feeling, I kind of have like like a rotation of like 
six or seven different things I make, and then some nights I just take home food after training, so it's easy and free. How how important would you say for the young guys coming up listening to this podcast? Would you say that nutrition is how like did you ever look after yourself uh, specifically, or were you kind of the kid that just ate whatever? I mean, growing up, I I wouldn't say ate whatever, but it's not something I like focus on. You know, it, it. I mean, I know it's really important now. I eat really healthy now, but like growing up as a kid, like I would eat whatever my mom would make me, and she's a great cook. It was always like not like unhealthy, but I would eat like candy, like every now and again like ice cream like every night so i mean i wasn't like the healthiest kid growing up eating wise whenever we have players on around in your age range we get a ton of questions on stuff younger players can do nutrition wise game wise whatever whatever it may be um to be in the same position that you're in right now what advice mm -hmm. would you give to maybe a 14 15 year old who's looking to make um the type of moves that you've made um for me the biggest thing i say i did growing up was like just extra training like I think team training is not enough like growing up as a kid you have so much energy I mean you're not gonna like pull a hamstring or anything you don't have really muscles at that age so I think it's just doing a lot of extra training like I would train with my dad and my brother before I would go to training like I would come home from school and then train and then go to our team training after so I think that's really important in development. Would you say there was any I mean I know every player has their ups and downs in, in their career with you it seems like it's been a lot of ups especially as of late um, was there any, was there ever any times where you were kind of feeling down on your game or, I mean, how'd you overcome that? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's going up now, but I I dislocated my knee twice in the past. So, I mean, those were obviously tough, tough moments. I was out for like five or six months the first time. And like, right when I got to the first team, like I was, I wasn't signed yet, but I was training and like my second session, I, I dislocated it again. So I mean, that was really hard to, to do because I was just getting an opportunity, you know, and that, that hurt a lot. Definitely, especially at such a young age, you know, injuries are always bad, but whenever it's to a young player, it's, it's always so much Yeah, hard. It's, it, was, it was tough for sure. I know how injuries are um, being away from your family. Um, I've gotten injured mm -hmm. a couple times since I've been in Europe. It can be like the hardest thing ever. It feels like the, the one reason you're away from your family is to play and you can't even yeah. do that. So I don't know if you felt that way. And if you did, you know, is there any kind of thing that you did specifically to get over that hump? Is there any other way that you, that, you know, is there anything you do to distract yourself, whether that's video games or, you know, whatever it may be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think living with the, like, 10 other kids really helped because, I mean, I wasn't by myself, you know. Obviously, being away from my family sucked and being hurt. I mean, I used, like you said, the one thing I came here to do is play, play soccer. So just, I think living with them and just, I would like play video games in my spare time because I wouldn't be able to go to training or anything because I couldn't walk. So, I mean, I, I play a lot of FIFA. So I, that's how I got really good at FIFA. According to Jogo, you didn't play a lot of Madden though, Sammy. So <laughs> yeah, that leaves us where we are. He's a capper. I'm telling you, he's trash. <laughs> no, I want to hear this story. I want to actually hear your side of the story though because you're saying he's lying, but I want to like, what was the score? Like, did you beat him actually? We no the thing he's talking about is we played two v two Madden so it's him and Brian Gutierrez and me and and Cuevas and Cuevas was so bad like he was selling me I was throwing dimes I was the quarterback <laughs> but they kept like running the ball and like we're trying to have fun like going one on one and they're running the damn ball like either it wasn't even fun that's what he, if that's what he's talking about he's lying we we asked Pax, Pax in the same question who's the best and worst uh, at Madden in the in the group. No, gamer. Gamer in general. Gamer in general. Fair, gamer, fair. I'm going to go with me. I'm the best. Like, overall. Mm -hmm. like, I'm the best FIFA player, for sure. Like, that's not even a question. I, I'm nice at it now. Just because of injury. I just played, like, all day. And then, the worst, Jogo. He was awful. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I think Paxton said Guti. So, you had you had two of the worst guys on the same team, and you couldn't beat him. Like, what's, what's good with that? Oh, no. Cuevas is so – he's bad at every game. Never mind. <laughs> him. He's tragic. <laughs> now i want to ask you you seem like a confident player i mean it takes a lot of guts to to leave because you're already getting called into the national team at gachi so to be able to pick up and leave and go to another academy i mean obviously it takes guts what were you feeling and it takes a lot of guts to do this what were you feeling when you had to you know walk up and take the pk versus nashville you know to keep the play playoff hopes alive uh, I mean, I'm I, I'm a really confident player. Like I have a lot of belief in myself, my ability, and I mean, I just I knew I was gonna score. Like I just walked up, just thinking about celebrating, basically, because I mean, I have a lot of confidence. You're not gonna picture yourself missing going to take a PK. So I mean, 
I, I practice it a lot too. Just I practice a lot of set pieces after training. So that's something I'm really confident in. And tell me the story. Why why the ice and in the vein celebration? <laughs> Everyone thinks I, I did it first, but I looked at Hatfield and Ali Vidoy was doing it. So I did it back and no one saw him do it, I guess. So it just it became my thing, I guess. Bro, you should see the headlines. It was, you know, Philly player ice has ice in his veins, all this stuff. So I mean, you made all the headlines. You can't complain too much. Hey, I'll I'll take it. Speaking of playoffs, the MLS season is wrapped up. Playoffs is coming up. Who takes the MLS Cup this year? Philly. 100%? No doubt. 100%. Is that a promise to the to the uh, union loyal? Of course. We're winning it all. No, but seriously, though. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah? I'm serious. I mean, you're I'm moving really around. Confident. You're moving around a little bit. When people move around, it means they're not sure. They're not oh, sure of themselves. My. No, I mean, hey, we're undefeated at home this year for a reason, so it's gonna keep going. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, is there anything that you'd say? You know, let, let's let's look at your career as a whole. We got this question from a fan. They said, "What is the lowest low and the highest high in your career so far?" I would say the lowest was my second day training with the first team and dislocating my knee. That was really tough just because I didn't even get a chance to like showcase myself there. And my high, I would have to say the the Houston Dynamo game, scoring my first goal and getting an assist in that game. That was that was really special to me. How did you celebrate that goal, by the way? Oh, I did the Mbappe. <laughs> that's like that's what I do after I score. Okay. Do you, is there any future where we see just a personalized Jack McGlynn celebration? Uh, maybe. I just need to score more. I still only have one goal, so no one's seen it yet, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think I think uh I think we need to see a personalized one considering the fact that you said, and this is exactly a quote from two minutes earlier in the podcast, you said that when you walked up to take the PK, you were already thinking about your celebration. So I'm sure you have something in there that you can pull that you can pull up. Hey, we'll we'll find out. Maybe I'll score in the playoffs and you'll see. No, nah, you will score boxes, in the playoffs. Maybe. You will score in the I playoffs. So. We have something called the Chum Chat Blessing. We haven't brought it up this season, but it's a real thing. It generally is a real thing. We've had, you know, Brennan on here, then he went on to kill it. Now he's at Leeds. Uh, Mark, before he went to Genk, all this stuff. So, I think y'all hear it first. Jack McGlynn is going to score in the playoffs. And, I mean, who knows? I think you guys will win the MLS Cup. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a Dallas supporter, but, you know, hopefully you guys make it at least all the way to the MLS Cup, and then we'll see from there. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Dallas are good. We, I mean, they smacked us when we played them, so. Yeah, they're, we'll see. We'll see. The MLS is always so weird, though, especially in playoffs. I guess it just depends kind of if you catch them on a good day or a bad day. Same with you guys, I guess. Yeah, especially with, like, the bye. Like, teams that usually have the bye lose first game because, you know, you're not in, like, the playoff flow yet. But I think I think we're going to be good. Yeah. We have a we have a typical question that we always ask everyone. And I don't know if you're prepared for this. You know, you can take your time to think about it. There's no right or wrong answer. But we always ask mm -hmm. what your definition of success is and if you think you've achieved it yet. Mm, that's a good question. I would say – my definition of success is being a starter in a top five league. That's what I was like being an established player in one of the top five leagues. And I don't think I'm anywhere close to success yet. I still think I have a lot more to go in my career. Wouldn't you say though, that if you had, if I had told, you know, the, the, the Jack in this picture that I showed earlier, if I had told him, yo, you know, Jack, this Jack is going to play a crucial role in, in Philly making it to the playoffs. He's going to be, you know, probably soon to be starter on the Philly Union first team. He's going to be, a you know, an always selection for the U-20 national team. Is that Jack success successful? If I would have asked, you know, 14-year-old Jack that, would he have said yes? I think he would have said yes. But, I mean, as you grow older, goals change, and my goals are a lot higher than what they were back then. So I think that – I think that's for everybody. You should have high goals and try to reach for them. Okay. Perfect answer. So what happens – when you become a starter in the top five league, are you successful then? Then I want to become a starter in the top club in the world. It just keeps going. I like that. That's the perfect mentality you have to have. And I think it's probably one of the best answers genuinely that we've had because, you know, you admit that goals are always changing and stuff like that based off your circumstances. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you have anything else, Chris? Yeah, I mean, do you want to go into the rapid fire? Of course. We So we did. We brought it up with Paxson on our on our 
when y'all are watching this, it's last week's episode. So we're doing something new where we're doing a fire round of 20 questions. We're going to put a timer up. You're going to try to beat Paxson. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a bad, I'm a bad co-host. Johan, do you remember what Paxson got? I don't remember yeah, if we gave him 205. Cause what happened with Paxton was, was I think me, we clocked him in at 138, but Chris <laughs> asked him like 19 questions. So we had to go back and ask him like the last question, like three minutes later. So we, I think we just started and stopped the time. So the official time was 2:05. Okay. But, but I think we clocked him at 138 since he's the first, since he was the first guest. I'm not sure though. I have to watch the episode to see what Anthony clocked him in at. But that's where we're anyway, at. Anyway, 138 is the time to beat. Hopefully you can beat him. Hopefully you can beat him. We'll see. Some I of the think questions so. are yes or no. Some of them you might you might have to break down a little bit. So I'm. I bet. You don't need to go too in depth. We can obviously always discuss everything after. But I'm I'm a go. All right. Joe, you got the clock. I'm here. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All righty. Who was your favorite player growing up? Steven Gerrard. What was what was with your bowl cut last year? There's a fan question. <laughs> uh, uh, I was tired of my long hair. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. We already asked this one. Who will win the MLS Cup this year? Philly Union. Favorite thing to do besides soccer? Play basketball. Favorite restaurant? Uh, there's one right next to me called Iron Hill. Bye. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Who do you spend the most time with? Uh, probably Matt Real because he lives next to me. Do you have any game day superstitions? Uh, I get a Chipotle bowl before I leave. There you go. Uh, which national team player is the best at free kicks? Me. There you go. Would you rather have three own goals? and tie 3-3 or score a hat trick but lose 4-3. Tie. Wow, wow, wow. But but which one really? <laughs> nah, I scored three. I can't, I can't <laughs> score three on goals. <laughs> <laughs> which one of your teammates has the most riz? Ooh. Oh, there's not a lot. Probably me, honestly. <laughs> Dream player to play with. Um... Luka Modric. There you go. Biggest pet peeve. Um, people chewing with their mouth open. That was back to, Okay, what is something that you have to have in your fridge at all times? Um, Gatorade. Okay. A non-footballer that you would like to have as a teammate? Lamella Ball. He seems like a clown. There you go. Okay, a song you have on repeat right now. Oh, um, Sad People by Kid Cudi. There you go. One, one, this fits in perfectly for you. One million dollars or dinner with Jay-Z? <laughs> uh, dinner with Jay-Z. That's crazy. Cap, cap, cap. I can't say no. I'm going to get flamed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most annoying thing about Paxton? What is it? Um... <laughs> Is, is, he's a slob. He's shit all over the place. <laughs> all right. Well, what's your most used emoji? Uh, probably the like the laughing one with the tears. I, well, I had to ask Paxton. The sideways, like the new one or the classic? Not nah, the classic. The classic. Wait, which one? Uh, Not nah, a sideways. The sideways. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Time him. Time him. Time him. That's it. That was awful. That was two minutes forty eight <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> It might have been my fault too. No, no, you gotta nah. get, you get, you gotta ask the questions faster, Chris. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's my fault. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Oh, no I'm way. Paxton fault. got a minute thirty. What was he giving one word answers? <laughs> bro, to be honest, Paxton was doing good, bro. Like he wasn't yeah, even he giving was one word answers. Like he was, he was giving good answers, but like fast. Chris <laughs> hoed you though. Let's be honest. Chris hoed you. Sorry. <laughs> Some of the questions are longer. What can I do? What can I do? The I bowl cut one was crazy. That was a crazy <laughs> question. I can't lie. That was a crazy question. <laughs> bro, I didn't I wasn't sure what your hair would look like when you came in because bro, I'm not even kidding. We got the bull cut uh question from a fan. Jogo said ask about his hair. And so yeah. did Pat Bro, we said Paxton, do you have anything that you want to ask Jack? We're about to talk to him in a couple days. He said, ask him about his hair. It was bad in the past, but now now it's fire. Bro, I'm saying it looks nice. Now it seems like you found your style. Thank you, bro. What do you I ask for? It. You just get it faded on the sides uh, and then kind of leave yeah, it? Yeah, I just get a skin fade and then just cut the top a little. 
all right, I mean, you know, this is, we're soccer oriented, football oriented, but, you know, we have to address some of the things you said in the rapid fire. I mean, you said you have the most ribs, like, bro, like, that's a serious, that's something serious to, to claim about yourself. Like, do you have a girl? Um, mm. not anymore. No. Oh, not anymore. Is, that a, is that a touchy subject? No, no, no. I'm, I'm chilling now. You're a player now. No, I didn't say that. Didn't you said you have Riz, though. Like, if you yeah, have Riz, if I you do. know you have Riz, that means you use it. I don't use it. Uh, but with I, great I, power I mean, comes great responsibility. Exactly. It's limited for certain yeah. people. You know what I'm Definitely. saying? Definitely. Okay, you know I mean? okay. Paxton and, like, the other players, you know? Like, okay. everyone else on my team, like, like Paxton has none. Quinn Sullivan, God, no. Brandon Craig is the worst, by the way. <laughs> if you ever talk to this kid, wow. It was a shock. I experienced it firsthand. I nearly cried. <laughs> but what about Nate, though? That's my boy. Oh, my God. He's actually worse. Like, he, he got a dog just to talk to females. and he still doesn't I saw that. I think I saw that on his Insta story or Snap or something like that. That's crazy. That's the only reason he got this dog, and it's not working out for him. <laughs> well, no, that's actually crazy, though, that you said that. Nate lives next to you, but you said the person you hang out the most with is Matt Real. So you must oh, not he like next to me too. Nah, nah, nah. Nate's always out doing something. He's always like some mischievous activities. I don't even know what he's doing at the time. Hell no, he's not. I <laughs> promise he's not doing that. That's the one thing I know he's not doing. What, so you... Another one. You, okay, you, okay. Said, you said that you'd rather tie in a game where you had three own goals than lose, but you had a hat trick. Is that- I was trying to sound like the team player there, but I'm die with lying. I can't score three <laughs> own goals. I I quit soccer if I do that. There you go. There you go. That, bro, see, I respect that answer. Yeah, I respect because originally we we're gonna say we we're gonna say score three own goals but win. But every football player in the world is trained to say, "Oh, I'd yeah. rather win. I'd rather yeah. win." So that's why I was like, okay, let's keep it a tie, and hopefully he'll say that I'd rather score a three tie, and lose. One point. I don't like know. one point. Yeah, one who cares. Yeah. Three own goals, I would have to take my boots off and never put them on again. If you want anything, um, you know, to promote yourself, the Instagram will be up the whole time for my editor. If you want to have any advice for the young guys or anything like that, the floor is yours. Um, I don't know if you have anything to say. I mean, not much to say. This is, like, the most chill podcast, I mean, I've ever been a part of. It's just, like, talking. So, I mean, it's a lot better than a normal one. So, I had a great time here. Hey, we appreciate that shout-out. We love when people say that to us. That's the whole goal. It's just – just boys, just chopping it up. You know how it is. But um, you guys, the ones watching, make sure to go show love to Jack. I mean, he he's the one who said it here. Philly is winning. So, I mean, if they don't win, go flood his Instagram comments and ask him why <laughs> he failed you guys. But <laughs> no, nah, really, thank you so much for coming on, making the time, my boy. Um, and if you guys liked it, make sure to like this video, share, and subscribe. And as we always say, go find your own success. Deuces.